<laughs> All right, I'm going to call to order a regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen, March 2nd, 2020, at 6.30. The first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance, so you'll join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are you going to say? So the next item is um, approval of minutes from the February 24, 2020 meeting. Um, I know you're sure. If you want to table them. I will mention before we start, there was an error in the documents that went out. Um, online, so they are on the the correct version. There were pages missing. There was incorrect scans. Um, so there was a page in there that didn't um, belong or have anything to do with the minutes. And then there are pages of minutes missing. So they are now on. Yeah, <laughs> they were. That was you know Robin didn't do the minutes, so they weren't numbered um, in their normal normal fashion. And um, trying to get them all in before mm -hmm. the end of the day on Friday. So they are correct on the website. And they are correct in the town clerk's office. And um, late this evening, I asked her if she would send out another e-blast. So I apologize if it seems like you're getting multiple e-blasts of that. We try not to spam those things, but I wanted to make sure the people who are reading in that manner actually got the full complete minutes. So um, I'll move to table the minutes until our next meeting. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. And Liza is um, ill tonight, so. Um, while we miss her, we're happy she's not joining us in the wake of all these virus concerns. Um, present to speak. Anyone present to speak? Just um, may ask that you state your name for the record. Yes, sir. Uh, Todd Bissonnette, 41 Cosgrove Road. I heard what you said about uh, the minutes. Mm -hmm. And e you know, an email blast. What is that? The people that have signed up to the town to get notices? Yes, if you go on to our website and the home page on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. uh, probably about halfway down, it says um, e-subscribe, and so if you click on there, you can e-subscribe to public notices or minutes and agendas from particular boards. You can click all of them if there are only certain things that interest you. Then when we upload something, it automatically goes out. Like today I asked um, that we share information that came from the health district about flu and the coronavirus, mm -hmm. and so that goes out to anyone who subscribed to public notices. So now, what, what about the people that don't subscribe? Is it possible, like on a site like you've done in the past, put a revised version? So the, the revised version is on the website. But to state that it's revised so people just don't overlook um, it. I don't know that it says it's revised because it's no, not, they're not revised minutes. So I don't okay. know that it says that they're not. The minutes that were filed did not change. It's mm -hmm. the thing that the paperwork that got scanned, it, it, it's filed and then certain documents were scanned and then uploaded that way and that's where the error came. Um, so I apologize that that happened. Only two things happened. A combination, but so that the, the correct ones are there. So we hope that people will go and check. Right, anyone else present to speak? Yes, sir. Ralph Tillis, Ford Assembly. Um, I had sent you an email mm -hmm. with respect to the charge. Yes. Um, I hope you will. Uh, I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I think there were some serious things in there that need to be considered in that charge. Um, Another thing that I want to touch on, I hope everyone remembers that uh, all school sits in a National Historic District, which may open up the door for some possible additional funding to renovate that building, at least the core portion of that building. And as I have mentioned in previous meetings, um, I think that that's a gem. It's almost 100 years old. I would hate to see it. Uh, be abandoned by the town as a school. Uh, it may not be suitable for classrooms, but it certainly could be suitable for administrative offices for the Board of Education and the schools. And uh, I hope that the Building Committee will give that some serious consideration. And I will reiterate my concern about the charge uh, seemingly pointing towards only a new school. It does not explicitly say anything about other possible considerations as far as the existing buildings are concerned. 
and that, that troubles me because I think that uh, with the enrollment where it is, we might be able to make something work with what we have rather than place down a new building in a new location. Um, the other thing, you know, back to uh, the charge a little bit, we are not going to get an accurate cost estimate on a completely new school, on a new site, until we have a site. And anything up to that point, prior to that point, is a guesstimate and not a firm estimate. And that troubles me too, because I think we're going to find that there will be infrastructure improvements necessary that may or may not be in the budget for a new building on a new site. Um, but the site on Moose Meadow Road, we're going to run all the school buses up Moose Meadow Road to a new school uh, just to grab a road. It's, it's just a challenge. Um, things to be, that this committee will need to consider. Thank That's you. all for now. Anyone else present this week? Yes. I, well, since Ralph brought that up, I got Just I, identify yourself. Oh, Parker. Elaine Newcomb, 28 Fermi Road. Um, I have a copy of some of this information on the historic district that um, I don't know if everybody's aware of and some of the, um, the basis for its history. Um, I, have very, I have a lot of concerns about um, a new build. Um, my greatest concerns are about the fiscal health of this of the the town, the state. The um, I don't think the availability is going to be there for the state picking up a whole lot of stuff. I think it's very hard to justify. Um, we have two schools, either of which would probably accommodate all of our population. So um, that seems like an ex a very extravagant thing. Um, so. Uh, and town law and in the town, my understanding so far, before editing, whatever, before final approval, the uh, selectman's budget is going to represent an 11.6% increase if it's not cut. And the school budget right now sits at a 3.25% increase. And um, I, I don't think times are good in Willington. Um, so, anyway, um, um, there was one thing on the, uh, on that chart, and that agenda. Uh, I was very concerned and very frustrated this last time, and I mentioned the beginning of my letter to the board, um, if we can have either a handout or we can have a projection that we can see when you're discussing something, because to hear we want to add this language to number five and we don't know what number five is, we don't know what, you know, it's, it's really, um, it, it's very frustrating very, and, and futile to sit here and then afterwards or maybe once the minutes come out, then we see in, in the actual language what was being discussed, but not before. So um, anyway, suggestion there. Thank you. Anyone else present to speak? I, uh... I think I would like to put this under present to speak. Uh, two months ago, uh, tomorrow, I was rushed to the hospital. I did want to thank the uh, uh, ambulance crew and of both uh, fire departments for their speed and professionalism in getting me there. And that's why I'm here tonight. And I would also like to thank the people of Wellington who came through with uh, cards and visits and been very, very nice to me and uh, I just would like to get that in the minutes. So happy to be back. We're very happy to have you back at the table. Thank you. It's a good share. Good and welfare. So we're we're grateful to the ambulance crew that we have that they were able to um, to be there and get the help we did. So welcome back. And don't do that to us again. All right. Um, moving right along, we have correspondence. There's a very lengthy list of correspondence. I say that it's one um, letter that we'll pass along as well. And we went to several various boards, um, and we'll share that with the school building committee as well. So it will be in the packet we comprise for them. 
Um, status report, the things I have to talk about are in on the agenda, so we'll move along to public works. Troy, how are things going in the lack of the white stuff? Yeah, we'll just, yeah don't, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Just bring it 18 days away. <laughs> Um, we've been uh, cleaning some more waterways around town, <coughs> patched some holes around town. Uh, we're working on repairs for the sweeper, so we can hopefully start sweeping in a couple weeks if the weather holds out. Um, we've installed a new mail slot at the tax, tax collector's door. Uh, we repaired a door at the clerk's office, trash at River Road Park. Um, we installed some new rocks today at Myrtle Road and Clint Eldridge to keep the full wheels and dirt bikes from that little piece connecting the two roads. Um, did our monthly inspections on the fire extinguishers at our public works garage, and we had a meeting with uh, DE and Hartford about our fuel tank removal. That's pretty much kind of. Okay. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. Let's see. Item A of new business is discussing the replacement of the fuel tank at public works. <coughs> so in CIP this year, we had um, a project to replace that. If you recall, we uh, you weren't here last week, John. I told you we were. We've gotten a phone call from Deep. They had alerted us that they were going to red tag our field um, thing because it had um, it reached its end of life. It was 30 years old, and some things are really on top of, and that's one of them. So um, we had been waiting for steep funds that we were awarded last August, and they are um, being filtered through DOT. So we've been working with DOT, waiting for them um, to get us an agreement and a contract so that then we could begin to extend those funds that would go towards um, a two-fold project, replacing the oil tank and then a new salt shed. And so we wouldn't be able to do the entire salt shed project, but some of it with those funds. Um, and looking at when a, a new steep program comes into place, applying for funds. But in the meantime, our tank reached um, 30 years old. They did, in fact, come out last Tuesday and red uh, tagged our tank, which meant we weren't able to um, obtain fuel from it. They did give us a heads up on Monday, so our buses, all of our public works truck and our emergency vehicles were all fueled. So we weren't without fuel. The buses were um, obtaining fuel in Mansfield. So what happens when, when they red tag is we had two days um, time and then we could go to Hartford for an appeal. So Troy and I went to DEEP on Thursday. We had a, a hearing and I believe you have a copy of the agreement that we have. We've been granted an extension in order to secure a contract to at least remove the fuel tank. Um, it doesn't have to come out of the ground by March 20th, which is the date they gave us. We have to have a contract by March 20th in order to do so. So um, what you'll see by signing that agreement and making that agreement, we talked about how we could get that done. Um, they came out on Thursday afternoon. They have allowed us the use of the tank for only the fuel that's remaining in the tank. We have, by Troy's estimates, about a month's worth of fuel, so that should get us through their deadline. If we um, meet the arrangements of the agreement, then they will allow us to then get deliveries of fuel. And, and proceed until the tank comes out of the ground. So what I did was go um, ask for an emergency meeting on Thursday night of the Board of Finance for them to appropriate the funds for the CMP project so that we could put it in a town meeting. We knew we would have to call because the schools um, have already had items on the agenda at Board of Finance for their roof um, replacement. So this way we could do it in a timely fashion, we met DEEP's guidelines um, and, and one uh, an efficient town meeting and one town meeting here for the town. After after I met went through those steps, Donna and I started looking at the numbers. I have some concerns because, again, we've been waiting since um, September was our first contact with DOT about these DEEP funds. Um, and I continue to be hopeful that it's going to be a faster process than it is. Um, I have concerns that if we only sign a contract that allows the tank to come out of the ground, then we don't have a replacement tank to go in its place, and that something will happen and those steep phones won't become available on that, at that in the same time frame. And again, they're giving us a, a reasonable amount of time to get the tank out of the ground because um, we're at 
it depends on the vendor we choose and, and their schedule. So it has to be by October 1 of 2020. So uh, Donna began looking through the budget. She believes we have enough funds in, in the budget to complete the entire replacement, not just the tank removal. So we don't have to rely on the steep funds and then could use those just for the other project. And Troy is um, waiting for quotes from two other companies. He's received one so far from Crop um, Environmental, and the they gave us several different options. And the highest comes in at 186, um, 693, and another option Troy's looking at puts us somewhere up right about 170,000. And um, so I'll be looking towards going back before the Board of Finance to ask for some transfers for that remaining 70000 so that we could complete, sign a contract that allows us to complete the entire project, get the tank out of the ground, and get it replaced so we don't find ourselves in this situation again. What we're looking at replacing with is an above-ground tank. This was on, um, the, the project was in the works back in 2016-2017. Um, and we shouldn't, this shouldn't be a problem again, correct, Troy? Yes, once the above ground tank, the, the state goes away because yeah. everything's above ground. Once it's above ground, so. you know, if you're, you can see it. So if there's a leak, you, you know, you can catch it quicker than if it's in the ground and, and you don't know about that. So what I'm asking for today, not looking to sign the contract yet, is, um, and you'll see in the call of the town meeting, is for us to um, call the town meeting to appropriate the funds those low set funds for the purpose of the fuel tank replacement. Okay. That's a lot of information that any person like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, that's one thing that's been coming. And, yes. Uh, I guess we, we're going to have to do it. Just, um, and, and we knew it had to be out of the Troy came yeah. to me about the same, some right around the same time as we were awarded the, finally, after a couple of years of asking to open up the steep funds, the reallocated steep funds. And we've been communicating with um, DOT to say, this tank needs to come out of the ground. This tank is past its 30 years, it needs to come out of the ground. I did speak with um, someone at deep um, the night, or Monday, Monday night just before our meeting, um, and you know, while he takes responsibility for the lag on their end, it certainly didn't help us in our yeah. fuel tank still being on um, red tag. So we have one state agency and another, you know, working independently, and, and we kind of are affected it in the middle. So what I want to do, what I don't want to do, is see us say, sign a contract for just removing it from the ground and then not having some of those steep funds right. to go back towards it and we find ourselves. Because if we, if, if that happens, they're going to shut us down and then we have no fuel. We'll have to bring in another need to fuel, which is an additional cost. Right. Okay. So that's my long talk about that item. So the next item is calling the town meeting. Um, Back relax, it's a long one, folks. I'm sorry. All right, so I'll move to no Town of Willington Notice and Warning Special Town Meeting. The electors of the Town of Willington and all persons who are entitled to vote in town meeting on the matters mentioned in the following warning are hereby warned and notified to meet in town meeting at Old Town Hall, 11 Common Road, Willington, at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, March 11, 2020, for the following purpose. Item one, to see if the townspeople on the re recommendation of the Board of Selectmen will adopt a resolution to establish a school building committee for the center school partial roof replacement project. Item two, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen will adopt a resolution to authorize at least the preparation of schematic drawings and specifications for the center school partial roof replacement project. Item three, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen will adopt a resolution that authorizes the Superintendent of Schools to apply to the Commissioner of the Department of Administrative Services to accept or reject a grant for the Center School Partial Roof Replacement Project. 
item four to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Finance will authorize the appropriation of $448,350 from the Capital Reserve Fund for the Center School Partial Roof Replacement Project. Item five, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen will adopt a resolution to establish a school building committee for Hall Memorial School Roof Replacement Project. Item six, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen will adopt a resolution to authorize at least the preparation of schematic drawings and specifications for the Hall Memorial School Roof Replacement Project. Item seven, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen will adopt a resolution that authorizes the superintendent of schools to apply to the commissioner of the Department of Administrative Services to accept or reject a grant for the Hall Memorial School Roof Replacement Project. Item eight, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Finance will authorize the appropriation of $605,050 for the capital reserve fund for the Hall Memorial School Roof Replacement Project. Item nine, to see if the townspeople on the recommendation of the Board of Finance will authorize the appropriation of $100,000 from Capital Projects Fund LOSIP for the Public Works Underground Diesel Tank Replacement to be reimbursed by the State of Connecticut Local Capital Improvement Program. Dated at Willington the second day of March 2020. There a second? I'll second. Okay. So you might ask, why are there so many items? <laughs> that crossed my mind. So, um, the these I, the, the four items are what are required by the state by DAS in order to apply for a school construction grant. Okay. And what Phil has discovered is that these are two separate grants, two separate projects. They require two separate sets of questions. <coughs> Um, although they're repetitive, and the school building committee is different than the school building committee that we're developing, um, he could be that school building committee. It's simply for the process of, it's only for this purpose, only for one for the school, center school partial roof replacement, and only for the Hall Memorial school roof replacement. Okay, um, so I've now, um, just a couple questions sure. here about capital reserve fund. How much do we have on that right now? Uh, I don't have those numbers, but this was from these um, were in the CIP plan. And they're, they're yes. In the CIP. And they are less what was spent on um, the patching that was already done. So, so, so these, these, in other words, this is this is already budgeted. All, all, budgeted all of the the three I, the three questions that um, surround actual dollars were all part of last year's budget and budgeted funds. That's We're not. This is not hitting any. And we need, yet. and we do need roofs there. Correct. On these buildings. All right. I would argue, no matter what, no matter what, no happens, matter what in happens in the future, those buildings, we are the stewards of those buildings, and we know that we need to. Um, take care of them as long as they were they are ours, and, and that they need. So far, the patching that has been done is working, um, and right, and, and it may or may not be this summer that these are able to happen. I know that that is what those hoping for, but in order to apply, there has to be um, a vote of the legislative body of those four questions in order for them to apply for those grants, and so there will be some partial reimbursement. Um, haven't we in the past usually uh, given two weeks notice for a uh, town meeting? Uh, I think. I, mean, I, I, I think know there's been. In this particular case. In this particular case. I don't think this is going to be that. Right. The date, the, I can tell you that the date we chose was so that we could move things forward to be able to sign a contract so that we didn't get right up to um, deep deadline. March 20th. Yeah. We, I would prefer not to work that fast, but this fits into the notice, the required... Um, Actually, the 10th. The 10th is the minimum required notice time for it to be in the paper and count the number of days. Um, so CIP wasn't very happy. They wanted to meet again on the 11th. And I said, <laughs> um, so while it would be nice if we could give a little bit more time, there's no... Re the only requirement is five days printed 
in print. Yes. So, with that, any Is there a place discussion? mentioned? Excuse me? Was there yes, at the Old Town. Um, no more discussion. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. If we could have made it less items, we would have. We could have made it all as well. It's quite a lengthy print. Oh, thank you. Building committee, we had submissions for our candidates. Did you have you receive those? Yes. You have them. I don't know how much time you had to look over them. We did not discuss them at our last meeting. We had anticipated you being here, right? Um, and so we thought it was important that all three selectmen be present. So my surprise, at five or four, when Liza said, um, "Yeah, that's not going to happen," I'm very sick. Um, that. Uh, you know, we can certainly still have the discussions or table this up to one more meeting to give um, everyone. The, the draft charge I presented last, last week at our last meeting. So we did make, I made some suggestions on things that I would bring, um, but what was um, put out to the public was the draft as it was presented to all of you. Mm -hmm. I will say this page, <laughs> uh, this, Originally, in the minutes, there was a second page to this draft, which included some just discussion items. That was a working document um, from back in October when we were looking at um, a school building committee. Um, that was not part of the draft that was presented to you all last week. So that was some of the things that were mentioned um, that were put out in the minutes. It was not a document. You yeah. shouldn't have it. Yes. I did, I did have it. I realize it's not pleasant to speak. Yes. You, you talk about uh, um, a, a charge that was, was presented last week. Correct. It wasn't. It was to be included in the minutes from that one. Right. It was week. given to the it was given to the selectmen at last week's meeting. So Liza received the okay. draft okay. last time, okay. and there was a copy for John. So we didn't do any work on it because we had decided to wait until we were all at the table. So while I made one mention of something that I would like to see altered from it, I didn't make any alterations to it until we had an opportunity to discuss, okay. and we chose not to discuss um, at that point. So I will um, suggest that maybe we wait one more week or we can have the discussion, uh, you and I. Again, I think it's important that we all be here since it's getting harder and harder. I will say, um, under item D, number one, this does not say a new school on a new piece of property. It's defining a pre-K through eight school to meet Willington's educational needs. Um, and that is the language we took to town meeting specifically, especially after speaking with DAS, so that we didn't pigeonhole ourselves into a new school on a new site. That if a renovated school was something this committee found to be the best option, this gave us um, the opportunity to do that, that it was a pre-K through eight school. Um, it doesn't have to say, if we say only renovated, then we lock ourselves into only being able to renovate. If we say new, we lock ourselves into that, or we have to start the process again. And that's what we didn't want to do. So um, this committee will do that work to see what direction. Oh, I, I agree with that, that but if you go on to item number two, mm -hmm. it says uh, recommending uh, competent architectural engineering for the preparation of plans and specifications for constructing, furnishing, and equipping a school, which kind of cuts out renovating. Well, there would be constructing to be done in a renovated project. Um, and I'm going to ask, unless you have some uh, objection to the superintendent being able to weigh in on this, in the Friar study that was done, um, in, in all of the options, the um, moving everyone to one building um, included some significant renovations. It was actually posed as renovate to new, and that would be construction. 
um, construction does it does not limit us to only a new building. And I think that's important to say. Correct? Correct. So if that's correct. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, this does not say construction. It says constructing. Correct. And if I understand the English language correctly, constructing means building. I think you need to find a different word if you're going to uh, <coughs> Say you're, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? You need, we need a different word than constructing because that's how I would read it. I think the constructing for, well, we'll figure out a word. Okay. That, that's number one. Sure. I had um, at last last week's meeting when I, and again, Liza just received a copy of the draft um, at the meeting and we chose to wait. Number five, finding and recommending a site to meet school construction needs. I, um, again, would suggest that we add if necessary because that item um, may or may not be needed in a renovated project. We may still need additional land and if there were a new building on a new site, there would be um, a site purchase, but it may not be necessary. Well, and again, uh, I I would agree at least at the very least mm -hmm. put in if necessary um, because yes, yeah, so otherwise uh, this too is saying okay, we're going to build a new school. Mm -hmm. And and I will say to you that when um, I work, Phil and I worked together on the draft of the original part. We worked on it back in November when we were looking at specifically a new school on a new site. So we did change some, you know, in number one, we changed it from that to a pre-K through eight school. Um, and I, before we, um, for this draft purpose, in item 10, I would, at the end, I would say identify potential future uses of the two current school facilities if a new site is chosen. Um, and I'm still not sure because we would, if we can, if, even if we went to one, um, one building, we'd still have another one that we will have left out of. And I think it's um, important to identify potential uses. I understand that we do not own Hall School if we do not use it as a school, but I don't think that precludes us from entering into conversation about what could happen that could lead to conversations with the Hall Foundation about potential uses. That's um, very well put because uh, I'm. But, you know, if. If we were to go to one school, that is a site we could stay on, and that school may not be an issue. We'd only be looking at what to do at center school. So I, I still think we need to look at all the potential uses and, and could have some ideas, and there could be conversations. I think we heard someone this evening say there's you know another possible use if it weren't a school. Maybe we look at it as you know school offices. I don't know how much of the building we need for that, um, or what the appetite of the Hall Foundation would be and what work would need to go into changing that deed. There's a lot of questions that I think the school building committee would have to look at. But Can we, I, has anybody talked to the Hall Foundation about these possibilities? Yes. Is, uh, do they have anything to say that could be made public? Or? They don't want to see the building torn down. That's why I was taking off the, the list of options for the board. Okay. Uh, but they they value that building for sure. They see that building is is having some use for sure, um, and they would obviously like to have conversations as well as if if there was something new away from that school where it wasn't a school anymore. Yeah. That there was some thought put into that together with the town, and I've had that conversation with them. Is there? A, I hope I'm not bringing out things that are not supposed to be said or something. No. No. But uh, do they? Well, to put it uh, frankly, do they want the building back? I mean, I know they. if we give it to them, they'll have to take it back. Would they rather the town keep it, or do they? I, I think that uh, for the Hall Foundation to take that building back, we, we would be strapping them financially. Yeah. It would be significant impact on them financially. Uh, I, I, I think, think they'd that like the to see the building be used. Yes, well, sure. Well, yeah. Uh, and so... My only question, and I think you've answered my question, mm -hmm. is that that's another reason why, we, or, no, or another, 
another um, I idea to take into account here when we're deciding what to do with these schools sure. is uh, finding finding a use. And I think that originally somebody had an idea they were going to turn it into a hotel or something. And uh, any anything that could be used. But like you said, I'm not sure that uh, they could, and so we might find, need to find a use for the town. Right. Or ways the town to use it. But if we do, again, that's more money, uh, more money the town. Right. It could be, you know, working with them to identify some other uses, and if they still chose to keep it, then then they were able to run it with a different use. But I think pulling them into that conversation, to me, um, sitting on this committee, identifying those uses means having to speak to them. We can't we can't not have a conversation with them well, well, at some point. And so that that's part of identifying those those uses. But this was something we added in um, that wasn't in a charge uh, that we had originally the draft we had originally started with. That we have to look at what we do with the buildings we do have. But before but before we put it in here, it's good to know where we stand right. at the beginning. Uh, I I agree. We'd have to find some way to save that building because it's a beautiful Absolutely. building. If this committee, uh, you know, said we want to renovate uh, Center School to new and move everybody there, I, you know, you still see us leaving Hall School, and I think the people of Willington are still um, connected to that building. It would like to see it have future use if it's not as a school as something else. So I think if they take that to the town people for a vote, they're going to want to know what are you going to do with our beloved Hall School. Right. And so that be part of the plan, and that could be part of, you know, people's decision making when it eventually gets to the residents to make their, uh, to their vote on whether we go in any direction. And that's assuming we get that far with this building committee. So these are, uh, <clears throat> obtaining the approval of the town legislation, legislative body for all obligations incurred throughout the building process. That's town meeting. Is that our legislative body? Is town meeting? Yes. Which is why you have heard me say the superintendent at different uh, meetings that this is not us. We decide, or the school building committee decides. It's going back to the residents. They're going to get in a room and they're going to have lots of conversation as to what um, suggestion is brought to them and what final vote vote has been brought to them. So. <coughs> Have you? Do you feel like you've had enough time to look at it, and you um, would I, want to move on it, or do you want to well, I, I, give it some more time? I, I think know. we should uh, table it until we okay. have all three selected okay. together, and yeah, that would give me a little more time okay. to. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't know how long you had these documents to look at too. Give me some time. All right. Um, and I went out of order. I apologize. <laughs> I started with the charge yeah. and, and not the appointments. So again, you have the list of appointments. Um, do you want to table those and wait and talk when Liza is here as well? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I, what I will tell you, and I don't know if you had an opportunity to, to read the minutes from last time, the um, Board of Education um, was at a deadlock on who they represented. They had two people who would like to be part of. So then they actually voted to send two members to us. Uh, but we didn't have two seats for Board of Ed members. We could, um, and we could talk about this again next week, we can say, no, nope, send us one name or we'll choose one from the Board of Ed, or we could all, we could make um, an additional motion to take the 11 member building committee, make it 12, and make it two members of the Board of Education. Something for us to think about. Like they had two people that wanted to, comp wanted to participate, so. Um. Yeah, we'd have to we'd have to discuss that. We would. Yeah. So uh, it, it came it, it came up at their board event meeting, so I um, posed that last week, but then we didn't discuss it because we were waiting for you to be here today and now we'll wait for Liza to be back next week. So I'll start to give it um, some thought. Were there I know one of these uh, I didn't get a chance to glance through that one of these was a board of education member. Right, and that is one of the two members that they're thinking of. Um, yes. So the other, so other one did not put in separate from the Board of Education. So, um, and I, but I think the two members that they voted on bring, would bring a lot to the table. Well, that um, should be in the Board of Education, right? 
Yes, their vote was in, um, and in here, I believe, I, I know I had it with me last week, it's probably here somewhere, I had copied their minutes, so I knew for sure that they had, what they had voted on, that they voted to send us two names. <laughs> so, um, they put it back in our hands. I think, aren't they good like that? All right, so, um, I'll make a motion to table um, items A and B, uh, old business. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Is there anyone present to speak at this point? Yes, ma'am. Just identify yourself for the record. Hi. Maureen Lofoli, 41 Cosgrove Road. And um, what I'd like to speak on behalf of is, welcome back, John, first of all. Thank you. And second is, um, I'm sure you have a ton of paper to go through. Um, the Board of Education, as well as this board, I presented a package about prep um, school boards, um, Project management and the opportunities that are available to uh, Wellington and all the various towns. So, if you don't have that package, I'll make sure I get you one. And I still owe Rob an electronic copy as well. Okay. The other thing is um, that I was just listening in on some of the conversation is Crack EastCon or EastCon Crack has cooperative purchasing. So, above and beyond building opportunities, there's cooperative purchasing for bids of gas, diesel, um, the gas cans, gas caps, the, the oil tanks. There's a broad um, opportunity for, to reach out to Eastcom, which is, again, it's free consultation. It's, um, I believe, cooperative purchasing is $100 for the annual year for everyone in the um, regional area. But it's so broad that when you go out to bid for things, even with oil, because it's such so many um, of the regional schools that are involved with it, everything comes out much cheaper. Um, we're doing some cooperative purchasing for photocopy machines right now. We went out to bid and we went through cooperative purchasing. It wraps circles around the bids that we went out to. So we're actually going to cooperative purchasing too for our, our school. But that's something we can tap into as far as East Con. I'll get some contact information if you guys like it and I'll share it with you guys. And um, so that's with the diesel tanks that you guys are looking into. That may be something that you guys may be able to tap into that. Um, and um, so I think that's pretty much it. I wanted to just share that information and go from there about what we possibly may be able to do to tap into some resources. So I'll look into that information and share it with that. We have the same, similar opportunities to product um, on competitive bidding as well. All right. That anyone else present to speak? So I'm. Yes. Go ahead. I'm just going to put on the agenda for next week then for the board to make sure that they vote again. I have. I'm put it on there, and if it's a moot point, it's a moot point. If you're going to decide on Monday. Okay. And if they just so you when you see our agenda come out, discussion. I don't want you to say what's going on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Elaine Noko, 28 Fermi Road. Um, when you talk about the school building committee, there's sometimes some confusion, particularly since now there, there, the two names were submitted, because my understanding is, is that one position is ex officio, so if you have... The superintendent is ex officio. Right, but if you, can, if you can say, no, but on the school building committee, if you can denote voting members there's, there's one, it, it, it's, the board is voting, will be voting members plus one. The board but the school building committee. Right. Everyone is a voting member with the exception of the superintendent on the school right. building committee. Right. You originally thought of an 11 member board, right. which is an odd number, mm -hmm. and Gives you, 10 voting you had, you got an extra nominee, which would make it an even, even number. So you just might want to consider that and yeah. And just so, uh, hopefully it's clear, that extra member would actually make a 12-member committee and would make it now 11 voting members. Because the ex officio does not vote. I know that, but according to what so, I heard at the so town meeting at so Fall School, I thought you numerated 11. I will recheck yeah, my notes. The, the 11 members included the superintendent. Okay, you want to just, we want to just run, since John's back. <laughs> Could you just run sure. through the list? One was board, yeah. what, a board of selectmen, it's board a of board of finance. It's the 
the first electman and his or her or his or her designee, right. a member of the Board of Finance, a member of the Board, Board of, of Education, Education, the superintendent ex officio. Yeah, there was a staff yeah. member a, of the uh, Board of Education. Okay. I'm going to get there. A Board of Education staff member, a member with construction industry experience that's required by the state, and five members at large. And what is the... Um, definition or where, what is is the construct for somebody with construction experience that's what the statute says construction industry experience <laughs> is that I mean, it's, it's not defined it, it seems vague to me right. i don't know i think I, I, and, and it I also may agree more <laughs> if, if it's somebody who only builds things and doesn't ever doesn't do renovation then they would have a certain um, the, the language slant. is a someone with construction industry experience could be a laborer who uses a shovel in a day. Okay. I will tell you, we have some uh, more than qualified candidates who have been much uh, broader in terms of that, but that's the, so, so that's where we stand. All right, so. Okay, I, I have one more comment. You know, sure. I'm this person is being so open, right? Yes. Okay, so I want to piggyback on what John was referencing, and you are absolutely correct with the language of constructing, I-N-G. That is totally brand new renovation, so you have to find a spot. <coughs> so the language that you were mentioning has to go into construction, ION, and renovating. So it has to have like the, both words in it in order to have either or. Mm -hmm. So if you present both words, you cover your okay. broad spectrum. So construction so. slash constructing? Construction slash renovation. Okay. So then you open up that area so you can go either way. So that's something to just keep in mind. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else present to speak? All right, I'll move on to federal welfare. So I'm going to start with the, uh, not surprising in the room, that John is back with us. So we um, we couldn't be happier to have you back at the table. Um, I speak, <coughs> Liza's not here, but um, for the last several weeks we posted the same thing. We look forward to you coming back. Um, and, and we're glad that, that you're on the mend. And again, don't do that to us again. <laughs> So um, I'm sorry that there's some delicious food items that are no longer in your repertoire. Um, so we were discussing earlier today bacon flavored gum. Yeah. So, but I, I think when you came into this building earlier today, um, the reception that you received speaks to how oh, everyone missed you. Um, I also wanted to mention I had um, a an individual who, she's not a resident, she owns prop, some property in Willington, and um, came to speak with me and she wanted to share um, her incredibly positive interactions. Um, her name was Louise Cauley, and um, she wanted us to know that every office she has contacted here um, has called her back right away. The staff has been polite and friendly, and she appreciates and, and wants us all to know. So we often hear what we're not doing right, um, and she went out of her way um, to, to find someone she could talk to to let us know that the staff here um, really, you know, all they were doing was their job, but it makes a difference when someone calls you back, and even if they called her back to say, it's going to take me some time to get you some answers, um, a quick phone call back for that made a difference. So I want to thank Louise for sharing that. Um, I want to thank Center School and specifically Mrs. Kelly's first grade class for having me at Read Across America Day. It's my favorite day of the year. Um, it's awesome if you ever get the opportunity and you're invited to um, read to any youngsters, I encourage you to, to, to take you up on it because it's, it's a pretty good way to start the week. So um, quite the budding readers in her class. Um, this Thursday, March 5th, um, this board, uh, I'll be presenting our budget to the Board of Finance. So I encourage you to be there. Um, our treasurer, in your absence, has resigned. Um, neither party has brought forth a candidate yet. Um, and her uh, resignation was um, as of Friday. So we're looking at what we can do moving forward. But it has to be a resident um, unless we um, work to move in a different direction from that. So um, I'm still hoping someone will come forward where um, we're getting by doing the, the minimum and, and her name is still on the uh, bank account so until we get a new treasurer. So if anyone out there is interested um, in doing that, I encourage them to come forward. Now, I've been on there. <laughs> um, 
Okay. And uh, we did, um, we have had some concerns, Troy mentioned them, about um, ATVs and dirt bikes on the road now that the weather is starting to get a little bit nicer. So I'm looking into, you know, some, some avenues we can do to try to stop that. We do see them just this afternoon. I saw them drive right by my window by the time I could get up and get to them. They are gone. And, um, it, it, if we know who they are, we can have a conversation with them. So we're keeping an eye on that. Yes, sir. On the uh, legislative agenda, there was a couple of proposed bills having to do with that. Yeah. So um, that's, I had a resident come in to speak to me specifically about an area on Myrtle Road, which is why Troy went and, and tried to put some um, boulders in place to deter. Um, that's what we can do now, so we're moving forward to see what else we can do. So. <laughs> I mean, hope they don't find another way. So, all right. Seeing no other good in welfare. Again, welcome back, John. Um, I move to adjourn at seven. Excuse me, seven twenty-one. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh,